Welcome back, everybody. Let's continue to talk about power analysis. So far, we've learned how to compute two different types of power analyses. One is the a priori power analysis. That's the type of power analysis you should compute before running a research study to determine how large your sample size should be. And we've also learned how to compute a post hoc power analysis. That's the type of power analysis you would run after the fact, after you've already collected data, after you've already analyzed your results. In prior videos, we computed both types of power analyses for a one sample t-test and also for an independent samples t-test. In this video, let's get a little bit more practice running through those analyses. All right, let's see what we have. It says a researcher plans to compare men and women on a cognitive task using an alpha of 0.05. Prior research suggests that the difference between the group means is two points and the pooled standard deviation is four points. So we don't have all the details about that research study, but we do have the important numbers that we need. For example, first we're asked to compute the estimated effect size. We have all the information that we need to do that, Let's switch views and let's get right to it. Each time we've computed effect size, we've used Cohen's D. And remember, Cohen's D differs based on the type of research design we're dealing with. And in this particular research design, we're comparing two completely separate independent groups. So we would want to use this formula for Cohen's D. In this situation, Cohen's D is looking first at the differences between the groups. And the difference between these two groups was a difference of two points. Cohen's D, of course, is a standardized effect size. So now we want to divide by the standard deviation of those two groups. And the way that we get an overall estimate of the standard deviation between the two groups is by computing the pooled standard deviation. And we already have information that that equals four points. So we're going to divide by four. So in this case, computing Cohen's D is really very easy. It usually is. In this case, it equals 0.5. So that's approximately a medium size effect. That represents half a standard deviation difference between the two groups. Let's see what else we're asked to compute. Next, it says compute post hoc power for the prior study where n was equal to 32 per group. So we're going to assume that this study was already carried out and 32 people were men, 32 people were women. What we will do is compute how much power was achieved through that study. We call that post hoc power. Anytime you need to compute post hoc power, you should always be thinking to yourself, you need to find the value for delta. Because if you can compute a value of delta, then you can use a power table to easily find out the power level achieved. So the first thing you would do is consult a formula sheet. And you would find that this formula right here is the most appropriate formula for computing delta when we're comparing two completely independent groups. Remember, delta is known as the non-centrality parameter. Delta is always based on the effect size, Cohen's D, and also the sample size, N. We know the effect size, we just computed it, and we also know the sample size. There were 32 people in each group. So we have all the information that we need to compute delta. Let's go ahead and do that. Delta equals the effect size, which is 0.5, multiplied by the square root of this fraction. The fraction consists of the number of people per group. That's what N stands for, how many people were in each group. We need to have equal sample sizes to use these formulas. There were 32 people in each group. So the numerator of that fraction equals 32. And then according to the formula, we need to divide that by two. Well, as usual, let's focus on that fraction first. So we have 0.5 multiplied by the square root of 32 divided by two. 32 divided by two equals 16. Nice, easy numbers to work with with this example. Let's find the square root of 16. We'll be left with 0.5 multiplied by four. And 0.5 times four equals two. After you compute something, sometimes it's easy to lose sight of what you computed. So just remind yourself, you just computed delta. So now we want to find a delta table. 
In other words, a power table. And then we're just going to look up that value of 2. And then we'll figure out exactly how much power was achieved in that study. Here is our delta table, our power table. We want to find a delta value of 2. Here it is right here. In that research study, they used a two-tailed test and an alpha of 0.05. So we want to come down this column until we see the row for delta of 2. And right there, we know our power level, 0.52. So the power level associated with this study was equal to 0.52. In other words, these researchers had a 52% chance of finding differences between those two groups when differences between those two groups really do exist. Think about it this way. It turns out that the researchers had a chance equivalent to about a coin toss of finding those differences. That's not very good. Let's see what it would take to improve upon that. Let's look at the next question. The next question asks, what total sample size n would the researcher need to obtain a power of 85%? 85% is pretty good power. Remember, 80% would be a minimum sufficient power level. Compute an a priori power analysis. All right, let's do that. Now you should be saying to yourself, if I'm computing an a priori power analysis, I'm computing this power analysis before I even start collecting data for this study. So at this point, I'm computing a power analysis so that I can determine how many research subjects should I have in each group? So in other words, you want to find out sample size. You want to find out n. Now you can consult your formula sheet and find the most appropriate equation. This equation right here is the most appropriate equation for figuring out sample size when we're comparing two groups. Now keep this in mind. That equation is labeled with a small n. That equation is going to tell us the number of people needed per group. Let's look at the equation and see what we need. We need to know the effect size, Cohen's d. We already have that. We know that the effect size equals 0.5. We just computed it. We also need to stick in a delta level. And remember, we get to choose that delta level. We are choosing, for this particular analysis, a power level equal to 85%. We don't want to stick in 85 or 0.85. We want to find the delta value associated with power of 85%. So we need to consult the power table. We're using a two-tailed test and an alpha of 0.05. So we're going to focus on this column. And we want to find the delta level associated with power of 0.85. There is a power level right there of 85%. The delta value that we need is 3. So in that fraction, for that numerator, we're going to plug in 3. All right, let's get to work. So we have 2 times this fraction. Delta we just looked up, that's going to equal 3, divided by the effect size. We already computed the effect size, that equals 0.5. According to our formula, we need to take that fraction and square it. All right, let's look at the next step. In the next step, we'll deal with that fraction. So we're left with 2 times the fraction consists of 3 divided by 0.5. 3 divided by 0.5 equals 6. So we'll put 6 in the parentheses, and in the next step, we're going to need to square that. You might recall that 6 squared equals 36. So we're left with 2 times 36. And of course, 2 times 36 equals 72. Now remind yourself what you just computed. You computed small n. That's the number of people per group. So how many people do we need overall? Overall, we're going to need 72 times 2. And 72 times 2 equals 144. So in order to run this study with 85% power, based on using an alpha of 0.05, a two-tailed test, and having an effect size of 0.5, we would need 144 people overall, 72 men and 72 women. If you can go through examples like this and compute everything that we just computed, then you're in pretty good shape. You understand power pretty well. The good news is that we don't always need to compute power by hand. 
In fact, I'm going to show you in the next video some free software for computing power. It's called G-Power. I'll see you in that next video. In the meantime, be safe.